Welcome to Ken Hill Coaching Podcast number 44. Right out of the gate, I'm going to thank you for tuning in. That means you have an interest in uh, being a better motorcycle rider. And uh, of course, that, as people have heard me say, that is one of my biggest worries that people actually don't want to get better. So just by you tuning in, you've already made a, a gigantic leap in, uh, in what, you're, what you want to be as a rider. So thank you very much. And thank you for the people that have written to me, have sent me messages on, um, on topics. And I'd also like to thank my sponsor for this podcast. Oh yeah, that's right. There's a sponsor for this podcast. That's a hint, by the way. Um, let's just dive right into this one. There, 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 this is a huge subject. And this, this topic hasn't actually been specifically requested, but bits and pieces of it have been. So this, is, this, this podcast has been a puzzle that's been coming together for quite a while. And a big collaboration between a lot of my instructors of talking this one out and and you know how how we're training our our riders and how we're training our brains to to put this thing together. So this podcast is simply about reference points. And then what are what are five specific reference points on the track that that will um, get you going right? That'll 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 make your life a lot simpler. Because here's here's what's going on is uh, even though this is this trend seems to be happening more. This is a trend that that I've seen in in you know training riders for all these years, but but for some reason it seems to be happening a little bit more now, and we're not able to pick out. We talk about reference points, we talk about eyes. That's great, but what the hell are we supposed to look at? I think that is the bigger issue: is that we're we're not sure what we should be looking at, or or the timing of all those things. And I want to get really deep into that uh, today. So. The trend is, is we have riders that don't see, right? They look, but they don't see. And when you can't see, you can't focus. And then when you can't focus, you can't introduce technique. And we can't have technique, you can't have consistency. And then you're all left, all you're left with is being that wonderful emotional rider. So I'm gonna I'm going I'm gonna say that again because th- this this is really the issue is we have riders that don't see. Right, you're looking around. That's that's fine, but but they look, but they're not seeing. They look around, but they're not actually seeing anything. And then without that, without being able to see things and not being able to, you're not going to have a focus, right? If without a focus, then you're not going to be able to orient yourself to something. And then if you can't do that, then you don't know what to do. So if you can't do that, then you don't have the technique that goes along with that. And then we don't have a technique, then you don't have a habitual way of doing it. And then all you're left with is just being that wonderful emotional rider. So I wanted to repeat that because this is something that, that we're finding is a bigger deal. We can't build these repeatable habits. We can't build a consistent way of riding until we have that. So let's talk a little bit about street riding first and how that works. And then we'll, we'll dive pretty heavily into the track riding and how that works. So for street riders, you know, we, people have been hurt or you know, heard that get your eyes up, right? Get your eyes, you know, look ahead, all that. That's fine. So with street riders, we want, you know, again, my motto on the street is everything's trying to kill me. Well, with with street riders, we're going to use a much bigger, a much bigger picture of what's going. There's so many more things happening on the street than there is the track. That's the beauty of the track, right? So street riders, you want to have a great, a great experience of having a consistent environment. Well, that's, that's, that's the street. We just can't have that. So in the street, we're going to use a lot more of our overall vision and we're going to use our vision. We're going to open it up. And I love what um, uh, Yamaha School instructor Mark Challenger says, right? On the street, I'm going to use more of a wide angle lens, right? If I was a camera, I'd have a wide angle lens on instead of having things very, you know, just very focused. So we want to have our eyes, our vision opened up so we can identify our threats and that's what we're trying to do is identify the threats that are going to harm us and once we look at something that's not out of the norm then we can orient ourselves to it and then decide if that's exactly the 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 issue if that's going to harm us and then and then go from there so on the street we're going to open up our vision quite a bit more we're going to look to identify the threats that are out there or the and threats can be whatever, a cyclist in your lane, it can be uh, somebody maybe pulling out, not using a turn signal, but moving over. It can be gravel in the road, whatever it is, right? Those are all the things that we have to be able to do. 
And when, when we start to do that and you identify that threat, then as you, as you look at that threat, you'll scan your eyes back to where you're at because that's what engages your depth perception. And when your depth perception is engaged, well, now you've got a, 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 uh, a reference for how you, how you can um, react to it. So reference points are a bunch of different things and uh, they, they can be anything, uh, especially on the street. We're just gonna open things up. So street riders, let's get our eyes out. Let's get that wide angle, wide angle camera going. Let's, let's being able to look around to identify these threats. And then, then once you identify if it's a threat or not, then you can decide, you can act, you can orient yourself to it and then decide and then act upon it as well. And we're going to talk a little bit more about, uh, uh, those specific, um, uh, that specific language that we're using for that in just a minute. So track riders. <laughs> What we're seeing with track riders is not having established focus points. And I think that that's something that when you look at the difference between a very high level professional rider and, and, and more of a, a newer rider is the professional riders have more specific things that, that they're going to look at. And there's a great video I, I posted up on my social media and I think it's on my website as well, but it, it, it shows a very high level professional pianist versus a, a, basically a newer piano player. And what they did is with this, with this professional piano player is they put an eye tracking glasses on and the eye tracking glasses, um, as he played, were able to pinpoint exactly where he was looking at. The difference was the professional had very specific points he looked at and he would leave his eyes at that point until he got the result from that specific, uh, specific action that he wanted. But then his eyes would move very quickly to the next situation, to his next reference point. So for instance, you'd see him play and when his hand needed to move a certain distance to the left, well then his eyes moved there a millisecond before it happened. Same thing with the right, his hand moved to the right, his eyes would move there a millisecond before his, his hand needed to go there. And then once his hand started to move, he'd move to the next thing. If his hands were staying um, next to each other and not moving, he would scan back and forth between his hands to establish that reference. He was very precise in what he was doing. The flip side is, is we got the, the, um, uh, the novice uh, uh, piano player with the same eye tracking glasses. She didn't know what to look at. She, her eyes were all over the place left here, right here, in between, looking out. I mean, there was nothing. She, she didn't specifically focus on anything. So if she didn't have specific focus on anything, then how was she going to be able to orient herself to it and then turn on her technique? Very difficult. So here's what we're going to do with track riders. And if you, if, if you think that this is something that's not a big deal, this is something I work on with my riders, very high level riders every single day. And there's times where I have to pick out their reference points for them. So don't, don't think this is something that, that is, is, this comes to you naturally. And we'll talk about that at the end. So on the track, and this comes from, uh, another one of my instructors, Phil Horowitz and, you know, it's Phil, we've worked with, you know, thousands of riders at this point, and we're trying to make your job. Let's shortcut your, shortcut your deal. There's, there's five real reference points on the track that we're going to look at. Now, picking them out is something, but let, let's talk about that. We're, I'm, not, I'm not giving you specific reference points on the track to look at. I'm telling you there's five ones you should be picking out. And I think that's something that will shortcut your learning curve is you're like, well, I don't know what to look at. Okay, but wh what's the timing of them? So the five reference points on the track, and we're going to work these backwards, just as you've heard me do with how we approach a track, you know, exits come, we, we're going to, we actually draw the track backwards because it's where you want to be. That's important, right? The exit stays the same. It's just, we adjust the entry based on our speed, bike, so on and so forth. Uh, that's, you got all that from the podcast you listened to, right? So the first reference point we're going to establish is our exit apex reference point. And what we want is we want something that lines us up straight with our trajectory. We want something 
that comes into our view that once we know it's coming to our view, we have permission to accelerate. And you can do this on a track walk, you can ride a scooter, you can drive cars, whatever it may be. And I'll give you a couple of good references for a, a couple of examples for that. I was riding at Indy Motorsports Park uh, this last week. Fun, fun track, very um, tight, technical, blind, super bumpy, incredibly fun track. So we have, we, have, we have a lot of blind situations in there or the elevation drops off. So it's very difficult, uh, even though it's a desert scene, there's lots of things going on, picking out very specific things that become our reference points are difficult. So example, turn seven, as you come around turn seven, there's a big propane tank off in the distance. And if, is, is if I come out of seven, if I line myself straight up with it, I know I've got it. I know my exit's good. I know my trajectory is good. And if I follow my trajectory, if I follow that reference, if I follow that line of sight, I know I have permission to accelerate. The exit is coming to me because I've lined myself up with it. I, you have to anticipate it. And I think that's a great word. Another one of my instructors, Pat Ferran, is we, we've, we've established th this word, anticipate. The track's not changing. Nobody's, you know, no, uh, nobody's dug up that, that propane tank from the last lap that you're out there. It's going to be there. You need to anticipate these reference points. So as your brain memorizes these reference points, that's what, again, something that's going to shortcut your learning curve. Another example, um, at Indies, you come over a very blind rise. You have no idea where you're going, but I know there's a tire wall out there and specifically the end of the tire wall. If I line myself up with the tire wall and I see it as I come over the crest, I have permission to accelerate. It's not going anywhere. It's the same corner. Nobody dug it up last lap. So I anticipate that tire wall being there. And my only thought is, when is it? When is it? Where, where is it? Where is it? I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm engaged to it. And as I come over the rise, I'm orienting myself to, to it. And once I've got that orientation, then I know I have permission to accelerate. So this starts on exits. It starts on exits. So the first one that we're gonna take a look at is referencing our exit apexes. How, finding something that lines us up straight with our trajectory. Second one, we'll bring it back to our entry apex. Second reference point is my entry apex. And with the entry apex, what we're looking at is, what, you know, of course, where it is, but what control am I using when? Those are references too right? What, what control am I using are also references. So a lot of stuff going on on that one, I understand. So first one, exit apex. Second one, entry apex. Third one, where am I letting off the brakes? Slowest point of the corner. That's what we're thinking, right? Where is it? Where am I letting off the brake? Um, how long is my slowest point? Right? Those are references as well. Not only where you're doing it, not only where you're doing it, but the reference of your actions as well. So use that as something to think about. Fourth one, where you turn in. Your turn in point is, is, can be very, very adjustable and you can start to build, build um, great reference points for that. The curbs are fantastic for it. Um, and it may, the curbs you, you typically work really well, uh, but it can be a brake marker. It can be a corner worker station. There's, you can look at uh, a great one is um, uh, Miller um west track actually yeah west track has got a couple of them you can do um turn 10 as you come in west track turn 10 i know it's approximately time to turn in when i get even with the corner worker station now on an r3 it might be after the corner worker station on a grave super bike it might be before the corner worker station but that's my reference right? So that's my reference and i orient myself to that based on my speed and my bike so where you turn in, again, curbs, something along that line that is a consistent way of doing that. And then the last one is where you go to the brakes. Again, very, very adjustable. Again, it's a reference. It's not necessarily this incredibly fine point. When you're running within two to three seconds, it gets to be fairly close. And when you're running within a half a second, yes, it gets to be very close, but it's still a reference. Think about, well, I got a better drive than I did ever off the last corner. I may have to go to my brakes slightly earlier for that reference point because I have more speed, or maybe it's not a good a drive so I can go past it. It's a reference. So the five points, five reference points that you should be looking at as you go around the track. 
this will shortcut your 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 um, thought process. This will shortcut all the things you're thinking about. Exit apex. Let's let's get a reference for our exit apex. Something that lines us up straight with the exit that gives you permission to accelerate. Entry apex. Third one, where you let off the brakes or the slowest point of the corner. Fourth one, where you turn in and where you go to the brake. Establish these things. Establish, you know, for instance, I, I can tell you that, oh, here's a great one, right? At the ridge, I rode the ridge last week. If you come into between 8 and 8A, I know I'm going to let off the brake. There's, a, I know I'm trying to let off the brake at a very sp specific spot. And there's a white, con little, very small white patch on the ground. It's like a concrete patch. That's where I'm going to try to let off the brake. So I'm going to find those little things that give me a reference. So let's talk a little bit more about how that works. And we're going to use um, the Top Gun, um, the Top Gun way of, of doing it, right? Because we want to train. Notice how I said the word train. We want to train like these elite people, these high performance people. So with fighter jet people, the way that they use their eyes and the way that they think of their thought process with references is they use the OODA concept, OODA, O-O-D-A, OODA loop, OODA loop. I'll say it one more time, OODA loop. And with the OODA loop, first thing is you have to observe. So you have to observe. And again, this goes back to when you observe, then your focus comes into play to introduce technique. So you observe the situation. And that, that starts again with give yourself permission to move your eyes. Now, orient yourself. So now that you've, you've, you've observed something, you have to orient yourself to it, which means you have to let it come into focus. If you don't let it come into focus, then you can't react to it. You don't necessarily get what you want from it. There's, th these are, and you have to remember, these are milliseconds that these things are happening. So you orient yourself to it and then say, Am I good or not? So that's observe, orient. Am I so you orient yourself to it, let it come into focus in a millisecond. And if you're good, great, you move on to the next one. You orient yourself, and this is where the decide act is. If you're good, if you're good with it, you decide I'm good, you move to the next one. You decide you're not good. Whoa, what do I need to do to adjust for that? More brake pressure, more body, um, stand the bike up, tighten my line, whatever it is, right? You you are now in a position to make a decision. And then the last one is once you've decided whether you're good or not, then you act upon it. And that means acting as you move to the next one or you act on the on you know doing whatever you need to do to mitigate um, what's not right. So observe, orient, decide, and act. Observe your situation. Orient yourself to your reference point. Decide if that is what you want from it and then act upon it. Here's the key. It's a loop. It never ends. So it, you want to keep your focus engaged. This is what's going to do it. So OODA loop is how all that works. So the last thing that's going to go on with this is you have to train for this. This is not something that you're, you're going to get the first time out on the track. You have to train for this. This is something that you know, we're, 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 we work on this for years and years and years. And I can tell you from talking to fighter pilots, how this works and how hard they work with, it, work with this. Special forces operatives, how they work this situation as well. And even high, high level uh, you know, motorcycle riders, how much we work on this. <laughs> My riders at the very sharp end of the point are working on their eyes every goddamn day. So if you think this is something that you're just naturally going to work at, good luck. This is something you need to set time aside every single day for, and you need to train for this. Your brain's not going to pick, if you do it once a week, your brain's not going to be able to keep it absorbed and, and build that consistency. You, if you can work on something like this for 30 seconds a day, whether it's with my eye chart, um, and we're going to have some great online training coming very, very soon that's going to include some of these eye drills and these focus drills. Um, so you'll be able to get that uh, online training happening for that. You're going to, you'll be able to see how this works and how you can build the consistency with it. The point is you need to train for this. Give yourself 30 seconds a day. Push your dang shopping cart and find your exit apexes. Is that, am I lined up with uh, the Cheerio box? Am I lined up with the Cocoa Pebble box, right? I mean, find something that gets this going, whether it's in your daily commute, wherever it is, find these things and shortcut your learning curve with it. 
that's what really separates these these guys these these when i mean guys i mean this the people that are becoming successful at this whether you're a c c group track rider or street rider or high level world championship rider is their training they they don't necessarily have more or less skill than you but they're committed to their training so if you want that edge you want the next step in your ride you have to train for it so this has been a pretty good one. There's a, there's a lot of stuff on here. There's a massive amount of information. And I hope that you will listen to this. I hope you listen to it multiple times. I hope you'll take notes uh, because there's some really good stuff in here for you. These reference points, right? These reference points, how about this? They're focus points. They're orientation points. They're, they're, they're decision points that say, am I good or not? And these are the ones that allow you to act upon those and keep building that, that loop of how you're doing. Copyright 2017, Ken Hill Coaching, All Rights Reserved.